We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Welcome back to Liberty Nation Radio. Earlier in the show, we talked with author Joe Schaefer about the labeling of state-funded media for what they are. But now, I want to ask Joe what happened to trust in the media. Uh, Joe, thanks for coming back. And that media bias and distrust, this is not a new thing. We can look back at uh, yellow journalism, politicized reporting, all way back into the last century. But it seems to me that we've almost leveled up and are now in the realms of the ridiculous. Your thoughts? Well, I think what happened to them is the internet came along and destroyed their little control game. It used to be three television networks in PBS and local newspapers were much more dominant. And then the internet came along and gave them for the first time real competition. They have not been able to handle that real competition. And so basically, you know, they're they're trying to keep their captive audience that they no longer have. They've lost their credibility because of their own actions, and they don't want to face up to this fact. I, I could go on in so many directions on this, but what I wrote about in and I think I've written three articles recently about this. The thing that's most interesting to me is that these big box outlets, that's why I call them dominant media, big box, they think they can explain away highly unethical journalistic practices just by having a disclaimer box. And the disclaimer basically says, yes, we're funded by this person that we're interviewing right now. But it's okay because he has no say over our, our, our editorial independence. And, you know, I mean, yeah. you're basically putting it out there that, you know, we, we know that we are compromised, but, but trust us, we're not really compromised. And the example that I use, I want to say really quick, there's Spiegel, which is a German magazine. I yeah. think at one time it was the biggest weekly news magazine in all of Europe. I don't know if yeah. it still is, but very prominent. They interviewed Bill Gates a couple of years ago. And they had it right there in the little box. It said, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation does important work in the area of health. They've also given us $3 million in recent years. And then they, <laughs> they had that in the sidebar. And then now let's go to the interview. And the interview is, Bill, why are you so wonderful? Uh, I mean, well, you know, th- it's there's, that obvious. Th- there's also the, uh, the respectability coin of the realm that they get from uh, giving – fanciful interviews and uh, warm words to people. You you wrote a piece about uh, Politico giving uh, French President Emmanuel Macron uh, editorial control over the interview that he gave them on his return from China. And it was really despicable how, how Politico put their disclaimer. Their mm. disclaimer, they tried to claim that they had ethical standards that they were claiming the high ground. But, you know, these are the things you have to do. What they said is in Europe, it's common for politicians to be able to check the thing. And, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but the way they were skewing it. Let me, I, 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 sorry, Joe, I can answer it. that for you. It's common among hacks. Yes, that that's one point. But the way they were skewing it was that that Macron was just checking the quotes to make sure they were accurate. But that was not what was going on. And in the last sentence, I believe it was, of their cute little disclaimer box, they said that Macron had said some things that he did not want published and they were removed. So he edited the story. It is yeah. not about checking quotes for accuracy. They allowed the French president to edit their story. And they claimed a journalistic high ground that, oh, this is not like us. This goes against us. But we had to do it in this one little case. So, you know, this is what they do. And, and this is very common in the media today. And, and they think it's OK with this little explainer. It's, it's a very odd thing. It's basically yeah. saying we're hacks. But let us tell you why we're not we're not hacks. It's very it's, very it's, a, it's a, a fig leaf to cover their journalistic cowardice. Now, uh, moving on a slightly different tangent, there's also what the outlets choose to omit rather than uh, the slant that they put on things. And I think that's just as important. Uh, I want to bring something. To, I'm sure you're aware of this, but last week uh, Elon Musk sat down with Fox News's Tucker Carlson, um, and for me, the the bombshell of that was that. Uh, Elon Musk said that under the previous ownership, the government had unfettered access to Twitter, including private DMs, direct messages. Now, 
I mean, that that kind of blew my mind. As, as he said, it blew his mind to find that out. But I did an across the board study of the let's call them the, uh, the the progressive left activist media sites, their digital sites, uh, and I found that j- just a, a brief uh, rundown is CNN. MSNBC, ABC, uh, Washington's most prominent uh, newspaper, devoted precisely zero column inches to this story that the government had unfettered access to personal direct messages. Now, there are a lot of things we can expand on that. I mean, was the access a normal thing through uh, court orders or or was it something that was willingly handed over without uh, the users being aware of that? But the fact that this is such an important story and there was not a single mention isn't that a disservice to their audiences it's an intentional disservice and you know it goes against everything these champions of uh, of liberalism and tolerance that they like to present themselves as in their minds there are all these you know uh you know a tough investigative sleeves rolled up this speaking truth against power and here they are deliberately ignoring and and a, a grotesque abuse of power i'm about picturing federal officials reading private messages from average americans all over the country and not only are are they not speaking out against it they're just burying it they're just completely ignoring it elon musk says he shocked that he was shocked to discover that and yeah. then, you know he he should he point out that he's even more shocked that no one's no, no one in the dominant media cares to report on it. Like I read your article on that. That was a, that was the big takeaway, the high point that they can bury something like this. They can just ignore it and move on. Yeah, they they think they're uh, they, they think they're knights in shining armor slaying dragons. And yeah, they I, can I don't hold think, on to that yeah. fantasy as they're doing the exact opposite. It's always yeah. as they're burning villages, right? Yeah. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, let's say. Now, um, we, you have this on the left, very much so, but you also have it on the right where they're presenting their, their disparate versions of reality. And this it's kind of amplified by the political discourse that's taking place, or perhaps the political discourse is amplified because of the partisan news service. And to me, that seems, it's almost a cartel operation, isn't it? What, uh, you have government supporting media, media supporting government, and neither is considering the actual audience, the, the, the people who demand some transparency from their government or demand, or at least ask for openness from the press. It's a cartel, isn't it? It's a cartel and you know, I, I don't even know if left right is, is even the right way to look at it. To me, it's like a, the, the term, it's regime media. They really are part of the ruling apparatus. Uh, repeaters, not reporters. Indeed. Joe Schaefer, thanks ever so much. Thank you. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five, produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone, hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner, joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggie of authors, Brendan. deconstructing the leftist narratives, down. debating the hot, hot topics, topics and remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five.